Good news for Americans on Social Security. This week, we found out you're going to get a lot more money in your wallets next year. Welcome news for people watching the price of everything go up thanks to inflation. I'm happy with the color increase for myself. And it's a blessing, and we we'll need it. While overseas, an attack on a Crimean bridge leads to concerns that the war in Ukraine could be turning nuclear. How will Russia retaliate? It's just revenge for a Crimea bridge. It's just basically revenge. Uh, so we expect this, but we not expect such a big uh, attack, such a lot of bombs, because a lot of, uh, a lot of bombs today in Kiev and other cities. Now there's a viral video making the rounds, claiming a U.S. stealth bomber capable of carrying large nuclear weapons has landed in Poland. We ask our experts to explain how they verify if it's legit. And what is scary about this type of tactic is that somebody, somewhere, had to find these two clips and piece them together to give the appearance that something's happening that's not. Herschel Walker! Election season is on fire, and campaigns are everywhere. We need war not! What you need to know about politicians using popular music in those ads. And MLB playoffs are in full swing. We have a fun fact about a major league slugger that you may not know. All that and more coming up on Verify This. Hi there, and thank you for joining us for Verify This, where we separate fact from fiction and answer your questions to help you determine whether viral claims online are true or false. I'm your host, Ariane Till. Our team of researchers, reporters, and producers are all across the country working hard to get verified answers to your questions. So let's get started. Many Americans have felt the pain in their wallets this year as prices have gone up for basically everything, from gasoline to groceries, thanks to rising inflation. For the millions of people living on a fixed income from Social Security, those price hikes have hit their wallets even harder. In recent months, multiple Verify readers who receive Social Security benefits have asked us if they'll get more money in their checks next year. And this week, they got some good news. Social Security's 2023 cost of living increase is the highest since 1981. Here's Andrew Bartline with the latest. The Social Security Administration office, they're slated to pay out big. You can never complain about getting a few extra bucks, right? Patrick Sheridan knows. I'm just getting ready to set that up and start next year. At the same time, Social Security benefits increased by 8.7%. Patrick will be one of more than 370,000 Idahoans reaping the benefits of a bigger payout. Yeah, it's kind of unheard of. Um, so I'll, I'll take 8, 9 percent any year. That's great. But Pat sees it as a Band-Aid. He retired in 2016 and knows the pain of inflation and the force of a fickle financial state. Some of our uh, investments dropping, you know, close to $300,000 in in less than a four month, six month span. I, I don't think you ever anticipate that. The uncertainty of Pat's private investments paying off isn't fixed by a larger social security sum. Crushing people's uh, 401ks and investments and and so it, it's not a pretty picture out there right now. The picture condenses down to one number, an 8.2% inflation rate over the past 12 months. And it's important that we get inflation under control. Idaho economics and, professor uh, Stephen Peterson support. says the inflation rate is a massive concern. While it's a good thing Social Security adjusts their payments to keep up with inflation, the long-term viability of the program is in question. Early as 2035. Social Security taxes at that time will only cover three quarters of the benefits being paid out. And so uh, there's the long-term issue of uh, how we are going to pay for these increased benefits. Peterson doesn't expect the Social Security program to collapse anytime soon. It's the worst that could happen is you might see uh, a modest reduction in the stipend in real terms. I mean, in your stipend in real terms. But he does say the economy is showing mixed signals, signaling to him a possible recession. And while a couple extra bucks is a benefit to future Social Security payouts, it doesn't serve a solution to the high inflation. Not, not that problem, no. Retired for six years, drawing a monthly payout, but still stuck, waiting to see if his hard work, his investments, will pay off too. And just the uncertainty of things right now, it's just, it's causing us to um, draw back just a little bit and, and rethink things. 
Many social media users are giving President Joe Biden the credit for the bigger Social Security checks, but he can't take responsibility for this one. We'll show you how Social Security benefit increases are actually calculated. Spoiler alert, the process hasn't changed since 1975. Social Security benefit increases are based on the rate of inflation. The Bureau of Labor Statistics determines inflation annually based on the average price of common consumer goods, which they call the Consumer Price Index, or CPI. If a person is paying more for the same things from one year to the next, then the CPI increases. Under the 1972 Social Security Amendments, the Social Security Administration uses the CPIW, a subset of the Consumer Price Index, to determine how much to increase the benefit every year. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the CPIW saw a 5.9% increase over last year. That's the exact increase in Social Security benefits for 2022. So we can verify, no, the president is not responsible for Social Security benefit increases. For years, people have claimed that Social Security is on its last legs. So far, lawmakers have acted to prevent that from happening, but that doesn't mean that the rumors have stopped. The latest claim is that Social Security will completely dry up in 12 years. Now, our experts say that this claim is false, but it is based on very real issues that we could face in the future. Social Security recipients are getting a boost to their checks next year, an 8.7% cost of living increase. That's resurrected claims that routinely pop up on social media, like this one that says Social Security will run out of money in 12 years. So is that true or false? We brought the question to three expert economists who all told us it's false. No, it is not true. <laughs> to understand why, we need to understand how Social Security is paid for. The funds come from payroll taxes, which come out of our paycheck. And for a while, those taxes brought in more than we needed. That created a surplus, which the government put in a special trust fund. But now it's flipped. The payroll taxes alone aren't enough to cover all the checks that we need to send out. So we're dipping into that trust fund to cover the difference. It's almost like saying, imagine you have $1,000 a month of expenditures and your primary job only pays you $750 a month. And you're like, I'm short 250 bucks. Well, you've got a savings account that you've had up from your working years. So you're now taking out $250 a month to pay up that difference in your expenditures. If you keep taking $250 out a month, in the next 10 years, you'll be down to zero. Then what are you gonna do? So we could wind up emptying our savings account, the trust fund, but that doesn't mean Social Security will totally run out of money. Remember, we still have the payroll taxes. It's absolutely false to say that if we did nothing, we would not be able to pay any Social Security benefits. That's not true, but we would, only be able to pay, you know, a fraction of what we're now promising, the fraction probably being around 70 to 75 percent. So we can verify, no, Social Security will not run out of money in 12 years. As long as we have the payroll tax, people will still get checks. But unless Congress takes some sort of action, those checks could be smaller than promised. With your Verify, I'm Casey Decker. Are you following us on TikTok yet? Well, you should be. We post explainers on new legislation and we fact check some of the wild claims that go viral on the app. Just recently, we fact check a claim that Florida is requiring female athletes to report their menstrual history in order to play high school sports. To check out the full video, search for Verify This on TikTok and click that follow button so you're the first to see what we post next. We are now in month seven of the war in Ukraine. For weeks, Russia has been hit with setback after setback. The latest was a bombing of a Crimean bridge that Russia used to access the Ukrainian peninsula. Russia blames Ukraine for the blast, calling it a terrorist attack. Ukraine hasn't claimed responsibility, but Russia has already retaliated. There have been more attacks on Ukraine's capital just this week. Kyiv has been struck by what are being called kamikaze drones. Ukrainians are now calling for more support in the wake of these attacks. More than 83 bombs were uh, attacked by Russians. And I would uh, like to say that uh, everybody should know that Russia is a terrorist state. NATO is now set to deliver counter drone equipment to Ukraine. Meantime, Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, says Russian officials are preparing for possible use of nuclear weapons. But he added he does not believe Russia is ready to use them. The NATO chief spoke out on the possibility of nuclear war. We have seen, of course, the speculations about uh, the use of a low yield uh, nuclear weapon in uh, Ukraine. And uh, uh, we have conveyed clearly uh, to Russia that uh, uh, this will have uh, severe consequences for Russia. 
uh, Russia knows that the nuclear war uh, cannot be won, must never be uh, fought. The EU's foreign policy chief, Joseph Burrell, echoed that sentiment Thursday, saying any use of nuclear weapons by Russia would lead to its forces being annihilated. People on social media aren't convinced that Putin won't resort to nuclear warfare. Claims about how he will retaliate are spreading all over social media, along with claims that the U.S. is stepping in to help Ukraine. This past week, a viral video circulated online claiming to show a U.S. stealth bomber landing in Poland in an aircraft that can carry large nuclear weapons payload. If the video were accurate, it would be a major escalation in the war. But we verified that's not the case. The video was actually taken in March 2020 from an airbase in the U.K. When videos like this pop up, we call in Verify reporter Kelly Jones, who tracks down where these videos actually came from. I spoke to her about how she got to the bottom of this viral claim. So, Kelly, what are we actually seeing in this video? So what the video appears to show is a B-2 Spirit stealth bomber landing in Poland, or so social media users claimed. Okay, and how did you figure that out? So we were able to confirm it wasn't actually filmed in Poland using a variety of different um, tools. Uh, one of those is InVid, which is a video forensics tool that allows you to split a video into individual keyframes. And then we were able to use a reverse image search tool to analyze each of those frames and see if it was ever posted on the Internet before. And we found out it was. Now, we know that those two videos, when you look at them side by side, they look alike. But how did you know that it was from the UK and not from Poland like those social media posts were claiming? When you use a reverse image search engine, it actually links back to earlier instances where the video might have been posted or the image might have been seen. So a lot of people were saying that happened at the Royal Air Force Base in the UK. And using Google Street View, which allows you to pretend like you're a person standing on the street, we were able to find the precise location outside of the Royal Air Base, also known as Rath Fairford, where the video was taken. And what was the plane doing there in the first place? The plane was actually there to lend support. Uh, that is particular Air Force Base in the UK is also a staging area for a lot of our stealth bombers and other kind of bombers that the United States has in their Air Force fleet. Now, I know working with you every day that you find a lot of videos and pictures that claim to show one thing, but it's actually something else. What kind of advice do you have for people out there scrolling on social media that happen upon one of these videos? My biggest piece of advice would be to go with your gut. If you think something might not actually be real, it might not be. And using different tools and different sources that are available for free online or reaching out to verify this, you can find out if something is real or not. Now, I know you're going to stay on this. As long as there is news happening, we know Kelly is going to be digging and scraping the Internet to find those misinformation videos. So thank you so much, Kelly. I know we'll have you back. Thank you, Abigail. We have more fact checks on viral images and videos claiming to show current footage of the Russia-Ukraine war. To check them out, go to verifythis.com. Herschel Walker! We need war now! Good to be with you all. On November 8th, Arizona can reject this miserable fate. You can prove that Arizona is still a red state. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome conservative outsider and U.S. Senate candidate for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Dr. Mehmet Oz. Those were some of the scenes from the campaign trail this week. You have to be living under a rock if you don't know there's an election just a few weeks away. And it seems like just about every commercial is a political ad. They are literally taking over television airwaves across the country. And a lot of those political ads use popular music. Verify viewer Teresa emailed us to ask if candidates have to get permission from the artists to use their songs in those political ads. Teresa is our viewer spotlight of the week, and Casey Decker has her answer. We're in the heat of midterm election season, which means you're probably seeing campaign ads everywhere. One of our viewers, Teresa, had a question about music used in those commercials. Do candidates always need to get permission from musical artists to use their songs in ads? Teresa, let's verify. Our sources are the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers, or ASCAP, and Daniel Schacht, a musical attorney. In the U.S., music is protected by copyright. If you want to use a song in an ad, you need to get a license. And just like the Grammys have separate awards for the songwriting process and the performance piece of that song, music licenses are similar. 
there's the copyright to the recording itself. Whoever performed the recording or the record label will own that specific recording. And then whoever wrote the music, there's a comp composition copyright. So the songwriters will typically own that. Fights and delivers for our district. To use music in a campaign ad or any other video, you've got to get both licenses. ASCAP says to get them, campaigns have to reach out to whoever holds the rights for individual songs. So who is that? Well, it depends. Some musicians hold all their rights. Some share them with labels or co-writers. Others have sold their rights away entirely. If the artist still owns their rights, then yes, a campaign would need their approval to use a song. If they don't own them, it's up to whoever does. So although many artists have a say in who can get to use their music, we can verify, no, candidates don't always need permission from musicians to use their songs in ads. They only need to obtain a license, which can be controlled by anyone, although it is often the artist. With your Verify, I'm Casey Decker. As we trudge through election season, just know that we are in this together. If you hear something from a candidate that you want verified, there are a few ways that you can send us your question. You can text us at 202-410-8808. You can also record yourself asking the question on your phone and email it to us at questions at verifythis.com. And you never know, your video and our verified answer could end up in next week's show. Now, no matter what your politics, here's something we can all agree on. Dogs are cute, and they do really cute things like this. But did you know that this adorable stretch actually has a name? This is our first Did You Know of the show, where we feature one relatively unknown interesting fact that we, of course, have verified. But first, we make you guess the answer. So let's see what you got. Do you know what the name of this stretch that dogs do is called? Is it star fishing, preening, or spluting? I went down to American University in DC to see if those bright young minds could figure it out. I know it's a yo it's 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 a yoga pose as well, right? Oh. Down downward downward stretch downward downward dog. Ah. Oh. Okay. Preening, I feel like is cleaning. Starfish sounds too obvious. I'm gonna go with spluting. Ding 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 ding. Yes. <laughs> I love that. We got to see your entire process of elimination yeah. there. You do well on standardized tests. Thank you. <laughs> this stretch, which oddly mimics what I look like on a Friday night after a very long week, actually serves as a way for dogs to cool themselves down. Fun fact, they are not the only animals that sploot. Squirrels do it too. <laughs> okay, next up. People intentionally share all sorts of information on Facebook. Pictures of their dogs, updates on their relationship status, new job alerts, and of course, all of those lovely political opinions that nobody asked about. Now, if you change your mind or your relationship, you can delete the old info, but does that mean that it's gone for good? And what about personal information and chat histories that you might not want Facebook to have? Is there a way to get rid of that? Well, for at least a decade, variations of a chain message that claim to protect the data of the poster have spread all around Facebook. In each version of this message, it says that if you copy and paste its text, you will prevent Facebook from using your data, such as pictures, information, chat messages, and posts. Brandon Lewis explains what you need to know to protect yourself. If you've spent any time on Facebook, you've probably seen at least one of your friends post a message like this, asserting their ownership over any image or data that they've posted on Facebook. Several Verify viewers forwarded these messages to us and want to know if they work. So let's verify. Can posting a message on Facebook stop the company from using your data, photos, and posts? Our sources are Facebook's Terms of Service and the Federal Trade Commission. It's probably been a year or 17 since you joined Facebook, but when you clicked sign up, you agreed to the platform's terms of service and data policy. Sure, they've changed since it was called the Facebook, but if you're still actively using the site, then you're agreeing to follow all of its rules, including how Facebook uses your data. This means even if you post a notice claiming that you don't give Facebook permission to use your data or photos, you already told them it was okay, and no amount of chain messages are going to change that. The FTC requires companies like Facebook to explain how they use your data, and some states also allow users to opt out of some sharing, but you have to go through a formal process to exercise your rights. Copying one of these messages doesn't count. So no, posting a message on Facebook does not stop the company from using your data, photos, or posts. The only way to stop Facebook from having access to your pictures and posts is to delete them from your account. As for your data, 
Facebook can still use some of it until you delete your account entirely. And even then, it may retain other information it knows about you. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Did you hear that? That sound means there's time for one last did you know before we go. Did you know that Major League Baseball used specially marked baseballs for a player who was about to surpass the American League record for number of home runs in a season? It's true. So who was that talented slugger? New York Yankees player Aaron Judge. During the first inning against the Texas Rangers on October 4th, he surpassed Roger Maris's previous American League record of 61 home runs in a season. On behalf of the entire Verify team, I hope you enjoyed our show and that you learned something new. I'm your host, Ariande Till. We'll see you back here next week with more Verified answers to your questions.